Good morning, everyone. This is Brad Matheny. Today is June 28th. I thought I would uh, share some charts with you going into the third and fourth quarter of 2023. It's very important to understand what's going on in the markets right now, particularly with the Fed, uh, consumers, hard assets, shifting capital. Um, we're in for a bit of a wild ride, in my opinion, over the next 12 to 15 months. So uh, be prepared. I'm going to urge you to come visit my website and sign up for the 60-day trial right here of the Mint.com expert growth page. It's very important for you to understand what's happening in the market and how to protect your capital. Um, currently, my research is ahead of the markets and has been for uh, the past two and a half, three and a half years. Really, I've, I've gone leaps and bounds with regards to uh, understanding how the markets shift and what takes place. Uh, you won't really see it until you get involved with it and you learn. It is kind of like a private mentoring session. Every week I produce hours worth of videos and content for you to review. I go over everything. I try to provide you with uh, updates. And while we're at it, I provide you with a host of resources to keep you aware of what's going on. Most importantly, I've just added a new feature called the Mint Movers, which are essentially daily, weekly hot lists of some of the best stock setups that I can find. And they are uh, available to you to make your own decisions. Uh, and they're doing actually quite well. Maybe I'll show you one of them here at the end. But let's come back over here to the charts. And what I wanted to do was focus on a couple of core elements related to the general market and the third and the fourth quarter. So I'm going to slide this over a little bit, try to give you an idea of third and fourth quarter expectations. So we are right now in the first six months of 2023, ending the first two quarters of 2023. We have two more quarters left to go. And I believe we're going to base and bottom out uh, over the next 30, 60, 90 days, possibly around October, September, October 2023, before we start to move a bit higher. You can see this is XRT, the retail ETF. You can see these peaks over here and they're diminishing. I believe we're going to base out here. We're going to roll possibly back up into this $77, $78 area by the end of the year. Nothing major. Remember, the Fed is on a mission to try to uh, tamp down inflation, and they are going to have to likely raise the interest rates at least another three quarter to one percent higher to really do some damage to uh, what's going on in the market. Now, I was looking at IYR earlier. IYR is the real estate ETF, and this is very weak. You can see we've gotten these lower lows. This is a weekly chart, lower highs. We're consolidating out here. This happens as we move into uncertainty. Um, I would be very, very cautious of the downward cycle. Notice that we are moving into intermediate downward cycle trends here. Um, and we are peaking out over here. Um, so understand that uh, we have a long-term cycle trend trying to hold up. The market is very, very weak. We're going to enter into a downward cycle trend from a, a peak like this. We move into kind of a downward cycle trend like this that's going to last another potential uh, 12 months out. I would not be surprised to see IYR move back down below 70, possibly in the 68, 65 area. Uh, let's take a look at XLP, which is the consumer staples. Consumer staples right now have flattened. Uh, you can see they're stalling here. We're moving into a flagging formation. Uh, we are in a downward cycle trend. Uh, we have held up okay here. As long as consumers continue to have money to spend, <clears throat> consumer staples are going to perform fairly well. Generally, they will perform fairly well overall because consumer staples are, uh, are essentials for most consumers they will cut almost everything else before they'll cut their toothpaste and toilet paper um, but we do have a downside move back down here into the 60s 
62, 3, 4, 5, somewhere around that area, back into this area, which is very likely. Uh, let's take a look at XLV. XLV is healthcare. Healthcare is stalling. You can see it's got a much shorter cycle length here. These shorter cycle lengths basically mean that we are rotating. This is an adaptive cycle pattern, which means that it is designed to identify cycles for us. We are in a moderate uptrend cycle pattern, uh, which is going to be very similar to this. Then moving into a downward cycle pattern, which lasts about, uh, let's see, 11 to two, so lasts about four months. Um, we're very close to an upward cycle pattern. We're breaking downward. We are flagging again uh, to the downside. Uh, looks like we could get a broader move into the 112, 116 area, uh, which could be fairly dangerous um, for healthcare in general. Um, again, about a 50% retracement here. Let me pull this up and try to move into the 50% area. So yeah, 110, 108, call it one, 109 to 112, it would be a decent target from where we're at right now uh, to the downside. Uh, let's take a look at XME. XME is the metals and mining sector. Um, we are moving, whoop, looks like I got it on a drag mode. Let's try to get it back. Uh, we're moving down towards this lower cycle phase. Now, my viewpoint on metals is that we're exiting a setup phase, moving into a breakaway phase uh, or a breakout phase. So um, I do believe that we are in a unique setup in gold and silver uh, and metals generally, which is going to prompt an upward trend. Now, I have to preface that around the idea that a broad downward trend in the markets, for example, broad uh, global market selling, will likely prompt a downward move in the metals and miners sectors, just like we saw back over here in COVID, that's very short-lived uh, and recovers very, fairly quickly. Now, this is the mining uh, metals and mining sector, um, we may have already experienced some of that already. Uh, but uh, again, I believe that gold is going to be up above 2300 an ounce fairly quickly. Let's come up to uh, transports. Transports are, I've got a lot of data over here on transports. They are setting up a base and a bottom. Try to get rid of some of these drawings uh, you can see we've got transports moving upward right now you can see we're in an upward cycle trend right now which is very good transports typically lead the markets by three to five months so understand that what we're seeing here with this support for the markets over the last this is weekly over the last two months roughly is leading into the holiday sales season, the uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas holiday sales. So what you're seeing right now is a bump in transports because all of the merchandise has been ordered, has been shipped for the most part, and is being transported around the U.S. in preparation for uh, uh, basically uh, September, October timeline, which is really only about 60 days away. Um, so your Christmas gifts are already moving around, and that's why I, we're likely seeing this bump in transports right now. This is a pretty good sign, but I would certainly watch for resistance back up here around the two, 248, 249 area. I don't believe we're going to get much higher than that unless consumers somehow uh, identify some real extra capital uh, going into the holiday season for extended uh, spending. So again, the 248, 249 maybe is a topping area. 260 looks like a very solid resistance area. Um, and again, depending on what the Fed does and what the economy does, we could see this move 
into topping stalling within about 30 days. So we'll see how it plays out. Uh, TNA, which is the small caps, basing and bottoming. Pretty easy to tell here that we're basing and bottoming. Now, I will suggest that capital is going to be moving away from undervalued sectors, uh, uh, sorry, from overvalued sectors and towards undervalued and ignored sectors. So TNA, IWM, um, and, and some of the more undervalued, ignored, flat, uh, kind of go nowhere sectors may be, may see a pretty good bounce. Um, and I do believe this is going to move up into the 44 to $50 area, um, over the next 12 plus months. So understand that this is not a very short term trade. I just know that capital will start to look for undervalued sectors. Um, and you will see move, capital moving into some of these sectors uh, as it starts to move, as capital looks for new opportunities. So let's come over here and go to the financial sector. Financial sector is interesting because higher interest rates are going to provide um, the bank with some uh, revenue opportunities. Uh, money is going to be parked into uh, savings and other types of assets with higher interest rates. But it also opens up in this cycle a very deep credit risk. You have commercial real estate, you have uh, debt instruments, you have residential real estate, you have consumer credit, uh, corporate credit. Um, there's a lot of risk involved in um, rising interest rates, uh, particularly the destruction of the carry trade. Now you can see I've drawn a bunch of lines here. We are flatlining. Uh, it does look like another leg is going to move downward. And I will suggest that really this area right in here provides some very deep resist uh, support. And I do believe that if we do see another unwinding phase, you're looking at approximately a 30% decline, maybe, in the XLF. Obviously, this sec this area right here, try to extend this. This area right here becomes critical. I mean, it, it, is, the it is the last area of defense for this sector. So really, you've got uh, 30.75, roughly. Uh, is the last area of defense for this. And you can see it is just flatlining downward. Now, cyclically, we're in a downward cycle. Then we will find some support, very similar to what happened over here, and start to move into a rebound. So we may see banks rebound a little bit higher in Q2 and Q3 um, before the real crisis hits. But uh, again, I'm not 100% uh, uh, sure that uh, banks that can move away from risk factors yet. IWM, uh, very similar to uh, TW, uh, TNA. Uh, this is the Russell 2000 basing and flatlining. You can see the cycles, a bit more detail in the cycles. We are in a downward cycle phase right now, which is likely going to prompt some sort of a, a, a stalling pattern here, but we will then eventually move out of the downward cycle like this. And you can see what happened in this downward cycle phase that actually moved upward. But at, once we move out of the downward cycle phase, we could see a move back up into the 196 to 208 area, roughly. Uh, and that could be very, very positive. Um, let's take a look at gold and silver while we're here. Again, gold and silver, this is on a weekly basis. Silver's rolling over after reaching a cycle peak. Notice how everything aligned right there. Let's see if we can find another area. Right here is close. We don't really have anything other than maybe this. And remember, this is going back to 2009. So this is about as close as we get. Uh, and you can see how it rolled downward, found support, and then tried to roll out of it. I would urge traders to be very aware of this gap. 
So understand that this gap in price, staying above this area right here, is going to be very critical as far as price structure. If silver is able to stay above this area or fill it briefly and then rally back out of it, which would be rejection, then we're looking, sorry, this is gold, um, then we're looking at really solid uptrending, okay? Uh, and that's where I believe we are gonna be moving. I think we're, gonna, we're looking at the last little bout of consolidation before we try to move up into this 220, 230 area up in here, up in this area. So we'll see how it plays out. But uh, right now, the markets, like I said, have about a 90-day window, in my opinion, before the crap's going to hit the fan. And we're going to be looking at a whole other uh, different type of market. So you have about 90 days of capital transitioning and sloshing around before everyone starts to see the writing on the wall. Let's take a look at silver. Here is silver, cycle patterns are basing. You can see the long-term cycle pattern is basing, that's this red one here. Shorter term is rolling back downward. Obviously, we have this support channel back down here. I'll draw it real quick, kind of like this. This is uh, around 21 to 2115 to uh, 2250 roughly um, this area and this double bottoming that we're setting up right now may be the last little bout of support for silver remember my research suggests that silver and gold are moving into a, a phase which is very similar to 2003 and 2004 uh, and I believe we're looking at a very broad uh, start of an upward trend. So in other words, if you know anything about metals and remember 2003, 4, 5, that's pretty much where we're at with metals right now. And I believe long term out to 2028, 2029, we're going to be looking at incredible growth. Okay, let's move to the SPY. <clears throat> kind of hard to see with all my lines. Basing, bottoming, rolling into this downward cycle here. This is really um, very indicative of a shifting market trend. We will stay in this downward cycle phase. And you can see where we were back over here. This is the same downward cycle phase. And through this upward cycle phase, we saw the SP uh, move downward. Then through this downward cycle phase, we saw the SPY move move higher. Now we're going to be basing and bottoming in this downward phase and starting to move higher. I believe we could see some real constraint in price moving forward, which means we could see a lot of sideways price activity. I believe we've already reached the top. If you follow my research, I believe we're going to move into an extended sideways trading before the election with a lot of concerns, particularly with the Fed trying to uh, uh, derail inflation concerns but uh we'll see how it plays out lastly i'm going to take a look at qqq i have a lot of drawing on here uh let's leave it except for a couple of these well we'll leave this for now so it looks like um from the last time i reviewed this chart we've seen a pretty good move Back up into this area, I highlighted this area as resistance many months ago. Um, you can see the line that I drew here, highlighting it, highlighting the potential for a 21% rally up into this area. We've reached this area, which now acts as a double topping type formation. We do have a very solid downward trend uh, that may be setting up here. So I would, again, urge traders to be, get rid of some of these, which were forward predictions. I would urge traders to be very aware of the risk that we could see a downward move back down into this 320 area, maybe a bit lower. I mean, ideally we have this area here, which is uh, active 
support resistance, which is in the roughly 290 to 303 area. Uh, and I do believe that we have reached a, uh, you know, it's pretty much like a dead cat bounce. This is a recovery rally. It could have some legs if, uh, if capital uh, function continues to shift away from risk assets and into stronger U.S. dollar-based assets. But I would be very, very cautious of this double topping formation and the fact that we're still in an unwinding phase headed into a presidential election cycle. Uh, ideally, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> I believe we're going to be a year from now. I believe we're going to be in this 300 to 340 range, right in the middle of this range, right near this yellow area right here. I, I don't believe the markets are going to go anywhere with the move that the Fed is going to make and with the move that needs to continue to take place to unwind the excesses of COVID. We, we've had a massive rally phase that you can see right here from 2017-18. We've gone from the 140 area to the 420, 410 area. Uh, that's a huge 60-70% increase in uh, in the QQQ. Uh, we have seen this reversion, which is about a 61.8% reversion. I believe we're going to move right back down into this area, into this 303 to 320 area and stall out throughout the election cycle, uh, particularly with the uncertainty going forward uh, uh, politically and economically. I just do not see how how uh, uh, companies are able to perform at greater and greater P.E. ratios to drive uh, prices higher. Now, granted, capital is going to be chasing U.S. dollar-based assets. So we need to be aware of the fact that there is going to be a bias to some degree to the upside in U.S. dollar-based assets, particularly companies that produce dividends and strong earnings. Yet, we're still in an unwinding phase. So it's going to be very interesting how this plays out over the next four to six months and uh, again, you want to try to stay cautious. This is going to be a very dangerous next three years in the markets for traders. You do not want to get caught on the wrong side of this. And you do not want to get married to positions. For example, don't try to short the markets uh, ahead of a confirmed downtrend. And don't try to buy into these markets uh, in late stage uptrends. You want to be in the comfortable middle, grab your profits, move to the sidelines and or reduce your allocation levels <clears throat> moderately quickly because this is a very dangerous market trend. We are not in the same zero interest trending like we were back here. You could see very wide range, 20, 25, 30% volatility over the next two to three years as things settle. So be aware. Okay, guys, that's it for now. Hope this helps.